In this clip from our 2019 Prostate Cancer Conference, the moderator asked the speaker, Dr. Evan Yu, to share some stories about some patients who had seemingly miraculous responses to treatment. His stories are significant because they highlight an important point. Statistics are just that, statistics. And that's important to remember as you're doing research, your doctor's quoting his statistics. They don't really define what's going to happen in your individual case because everyone's case is unique. With that said, please enjoy the video. What's the most mirac I mean, you're still early in your career. What's the most miraculous case you've ever seen in your career of a patient that you took care of? The most miraculous case, or it doesn't have to be a case or a situation that you went, wait a second, how did this happen? Can you share that with us? Yeah, I mean, I would say see, there's a lot, actually. I mean, because miracles do happen. So I have quite a few cases. But I would say this. I've had patients before that have had presented with very, very widespread disease that were felt to be kind of metastatic or incurable and wanted to go with really aggressive modalities. And we didn't talk about this at all, but we do have newer imaging modalities that are finding metastatic lesions early and we're going after them. This is way before we had that. So I had a patient who actually was a surgeon and he had metastatic prostate cancer. I mean, lymph nodes all the way up to here. And he's like, I don't just want the hormones. I want everything taken out. And he had underwent multiple surgeries, had everything stripped out, and underwent, I think, just six months of hormones because he didn't like the side effect, and it never came back. Never. Never. Never came back. See, well, so you've, you've had a number of these. Somebody just asked if he's alive. Um, he's no longer I, with us, but he, he was, did not die of prostate cancer. He died of natural causes, uh, a very long natural life. People don't understand. I have to see these guys afterward at meetings. If he told this story and I found out the person wasn't still alive, we wouldn't invite him back. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's a good one. You got another one? Boy, we oh, could sorry. No, I mean, because no, no. I just, I mean, we this, say. this is part of the problem I have with oncologists. Uh -huh. that I, I mean, even Mark's introduced me to this. Mark's, I've seen stuff I couldn't even, blows my mind. Mm -hmm. And you tend to hear more about the glass is half empty, but I wish, I wish people would sometimes show these case studies because there are a lot of them out there, these people that were just, suddenly it's all gone. Okay. Yeah, I have other cool ones. I don't know. This one just popped into my head. Um, this is probably not the second coolest one, but it's just uh, what popped into my head. So I had this patient that was on our stand-up to cancer study and we bi where we biopsied patients' metastases and we would do whole exome sequencing, whole genome sequencing, actually, of the tumor. And he had an interesting mutation in the androgen receptor. And if you read about that mutation, it's a mutation that seems to allow just standard steroids to bind to it. So he was on abiraterone and prednisone because you give prednisone to prevent the side effects of abiraterone. You get this fluid excess as a side effect and the prednisone helps serve as negative feedback to the brain to say stop making all these hormones. So it's Zytiga with right. prednisone. Right. Yes. So he was, his disease was progressing on it and when we biopsied him and found that result and I found that he has this mutant on the androgen receptor because all these steroids, I said abiraterone even combined to the androgen receptor, these steroids, glucocorticoids combined to the androgen receptor too weekly. But this mutant allows glucocorticoids to bind more tightly, okay? And so I said, hmm, maybe we should just take the steroids away and keep the abiraterone on. We did that, and it's like five years later, and his PSA is still undetectable. It just dropped like that. Pretty cool it's biology cool. in action, right? Yeah, but you know what's cool about it is that you actually had some kind of genetic testing done. I still think it's crazy that today when men fail any sort of hormone therapy or becomes advanced, that they don't get genetic testing done. I know what the con is. The con is, well, we can't help that many people. Not that many people respond. But yeah, it's still a couple of people. Maybe it's a couple out of 10. Maybe it's even one out of 10. Maybe it's one out of 20. It's another shot. 